Um, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm an agronomic consultant here at Integrate Ag. And actually, I have an article in this month's issue of Ohio Farmers, so I am legit, or at least somebody thinks so. <laughs> My uh, topic today is uh, uh, assessing corn hybrids by CPU and their implications for multi hybrid planting. And uh, what we're seeing is a lot of interest from the industry and our growers about uh, multi hybrid planters. And uh, so we decided that would be a great idea for an agronomic study. And we started this back in uh, 2014. And um, I guess the big question I wanted to ask is, is uh, we hear all the time about offensive and defensive hybrids, uh, where they should go, what planting rates they should be at, and um, you know, a little bit of background on offensive and defensive hybrids. The offensive hybrid, for those that haven't never talked to the seed guy before, are the, uh, the racehorse hybrids. Stop but they're the hybrids you want to put your best dirt sure. and swing for the fences on. You know, they're fungicide, um, high population, did you say, yeah. just one that's going to win all the yield trials and mm -hmm. probably be your top hybrid on the farm. And then we have the defensive type hybrids. Those are the ones that handle any field variability a lot better. Um, you may not get the long balls, but you're going to consistently get on base. And um, you know, they probably have a little bit uh, more robust agronomic package, the better disease tolerance. Uh, better and stress tolerance and the offensive hybrids. So those are the two type hybrids we wanted to uh, look at and study and how they uh, need to be positioned in the field. fields. Uh, so backgrounds, I'll uh, talk about that. And um, one thing that uh, since 2014 we've had the continuous support of uh, Gold Harvest, Pioneer, and uh, Stewart Seeds. In our plots, they've made up three locations we've used. And uh, we just really appreciate them. Uh, okay, so plot format, like I said, uh, we, each seed company picks its best offensive and defensive hybrids and uh, for that field, and um, then the grower will go ahead and plant them side by side and replicate the strips across the field, uh, whether it's by split planter or by every other pass and filling, filling gaps with our decay. And then um, each so equal strips across the field. Generally, our plots run about 20 to 40 acres. So a pretty good representative sample of what's actually off the field. That gives us a wide range of environments. Um, and then once the field's planted, um, all of the plots were planted at 34,000. We didn't want to introduce any more variability into the uh, plot data with uh, planting rates. But um, after the plot's planted, the grower can treat it just as he would the rest of the field, whether it's fungicide or or herbicide uh, timing or nitrogen timing as long as it's treated the same all the way across the field. And then after harvest, uh, I collect the data and we analyze it by the, the hybrid by the CPUs. And uh, next slide. So I've been talking a little bit about CPUs and I'm sure a lot of you have already heard this field, but there may be some that have not yet. Uh, the integrated ag CPU concept. CPU stands for counter productivity unit. And what it is, is a uh, standardized baseline uh, data set that allows us to compare <coughs> agronomic decisions that we make across the fields uh, a lot better. What we do know is that the old soil surveys, while they may work for taxes, they're not as accurate as what we need now for what we're calling quote unquote decision ag. Uh, decision ag is kind of something I picked up from John Holton, if anybody has heard his talks. Uh, what, it, what it implies is that we're moving past precision ag and that precision ag is, is getting the, the uh, seeds out there in the pre precise manner uh, using plant prescriptions, uh, accurate placing in fertilizer, and steering to the field, um, you know, plus or minus an inch, pass to pass. So we've got all the hardware done. Now we're moving on to decision ag, which is, you know, using all this data that we're collecting on all of those monitors you guys have in your, in your uh, machinery to make real time decisions in the field or in season based on weather, nitrogen rates, um, nitrogen products, nitrogen timing, and anything else we see from the data we're collecting, whether it's air imagery or, or uh, other in-season uh, data. So, um, the C back to the CPU, got kind off of a tangent there, but it's basically defines areas of productivity potential uh, using in yield influencing factors. Uh, we use intensive, or 
high intensity soil sampling, whether it's one acre or half acre grid sampling, to collect the uh, organic matter and cation exchange capacity data. Um, and then we have a topography <coughs> data set, either gained from, from uh, RTK in your uh, machinery or there's a uh, statewide light uh, elevation data set. And then uh, historical yield um, zones. Basically what we're doing is we're compiling your yield data and then mapping out areas that are consistently high yielding and then your more average ground and then the lower yielding areas. We've been mapping those out so we know where the uh, best parts of the field are. So all those get uh, assigned a score and then layer on top of one another. And then along with a um, uh, initial rating that the consultant and the grower uh, kind of come to a consensus on, that maps out the uh, uh, common productivity unit, and they run from one being the lowest, kind of your roughest ground, to the, you know, the stuff that kind of question why am I still farming this, all the way up to nine, and that's the you know, best, blackest dirt, flattest dirt you have on your farm. Next. So, on the left here, your left, my right, is a uh, common productivity unit map. This is for the Golden Harvest Block over in Trouble County. Um, it's a pretty large field, but we only used about 24 acres of it for the plot location, that's outlined in white. So what we see is we do have a pretty wide range of CPUs on this, and that plot area goes, you know, there's a little bit of ones, not really a lot. But there's some pretty good ground there on the right in the middle. So uh, really a nice, nice uh, location for this trial. Uh, lots of, and you feel very real. So just like uh, our growers back, uh, what's that? Okay. Just like our, our growers, we like to see a lot of infield variability too, pretty much. Uh, there on the right is the the uh, actual plot data uh, as applied planting. Um, 13U53 was the quote unquote defensive hybrid, and 14R38 was the offensive hybrid. Okay. And then here's the pioneer location. Um, Again, on the left is the uh, CPU map, and then on the right is the as applied planting. Uh, we use 970 as the defensive hybrid, and that's in gray, and the 1197 in green is the offensive hybrid. Okay. And then finally, here's our store seed uh, location. Not as much variability with the uh, CPUs, but um, you know, it's still a pretty good data set. It, it really does map that field pretty well. Um, and then 6553 was the offensive hybrid, yeah, hybrid, and 7A259 was the defensive hybrid. Okay, um, aero imagery is something we really jumped into in 2015. Got um, kind of across, across quite a few acres with this, but um, uh, we're just uh, from what we learned last year. It really is a tool that more growers need to utilize. Uh, we saw anything from hybrid differences out in the field to uh, obviously a lot of drowned out areas. Um, may not may not want to see those, but it's good to just know what's going on in the field. Um, and then you know, let's see. I mean, just anything you think of, we kind of saw um, the imagery. We flew all of the locations at Tassel just to get an idea of what was out there, and we also wanted to see if we were seeing any hybrid differences at, at that Tassel time before it hit. The, the corn head. Um, I'm going to toss this out there, maybe a little bold, and might get crucified by some CPUs, but I think aerial imagery is a great way to uh, uh, analyze your, or look at your hybrids in season and see what the differences are. If you're seeing a, a hybrid that's really showing up dark green on the, the uh, uh, aerial imagery and then also on the NDVI index, which hopefully if you guys don't know what that is, it's a vegetative index that's uh, composite. But, Pile through the air imagery, and um, basically a, a green area is, is a healthier, more robust plant, and then a red area is, is more, uh, you know, probably something lacking out there. Um, but at any rate, what what it comes down to is is it, it's another tool in the toolbox for picking hybrids. Uh, let's go ahead and click the next. Um, so here's some the Golden Harvest location. What we're seeing here is is a. Uh, on that, the uh, dark the offensive hybrid is just really showing dark green, even though it's in some more variable areas there on the kind of west side of the field, it's still showing up a lot higher uh, vegetative index than what the defensive hybrid is. 
um, in that same field. And we also see that in our yield data. I mean, you can clearly see the how much lighter the defensive hybrid shows up on the yield map than the offensive hybrid. So, um, for to me, that just shows that there is uh, some validity to the aerial imagery that it will give you a good sense of what's out there at task of time. May not give you right no the correct number, but it'll definitely put you in the in the right arena. So, go ahead, thanks. Uh, here's the Pioneer imagery. Uh, this one, we're not really seeing a whole lot of difference between the two hybrids uh, using the aerial imagery. There's a little bit of streaking there. That could be a mechanical um, kind of effect on the, on the crop, whether it's compaction or wheel traffic. Um, but we're also not seeing a whole lot of difference in the yield data, too. As we get through the, the uh, presentation, you'll see more of that. But um, what this kind of says is, okay, not all hybrids are going to show a big difference at, at uh, tassel time when you're doing your aerial imagery, and that's all right. I mean, if you've got two hybrids running neck and neck, then they're either you know, probably some of your worst hybrids or your best hybrids. But it comes down to the grower to go out in the field and find out what's going on there. I mean, it, uh, you just need to, again, scouting, be in the fields, uh, do some yield checks, find out what you think that hybrid could come in at uh, yield-wise. and then use that aerial imagery to get a better sense of how it's performing across all your acres. Um, I, I put this quote in here, a picture's worth a thousand words, but what's the title of the book? Is it weather? Is it compaction? Is it um, planting rates? Is it uh, some sort of mechanical screw-up, whether it's sprayer or what have you? Um, that's why you need to use aerial imagery to go out and look in the fields. Next. Um, I just want to flip the, we may flip back real quick, Evan. Okay, what I want to show on the next slide was just look at the aerial imagery and the yield map <coughs> compared to next slide, the uh, CPU map, how it maps that, that really uh, eights and nines, and then it goes up into a, kind of the hillside there when it would drop down into the threes and fours. Just the aerial imagery to us really confirms what we're doing with the uh, CPU maps, is that uh, the CPU maps give us a pretty good baseline data set that accurately maps the uh, yield potential on the field. But next slide. And then finally, here's the uh, Stewart aerial imagery. Um, you can clearly see that there is a hybrid difference there with the offensive versus the defense. The defensive really is just showing up like a rock star at the, uh, at the aerial imagery. OK, so here's finally the results. Um, the offensive hybrid is in blue and the defensive hybrid is in, in orange. And the takeaway here is, is that they both perform at a pretty high level. I mean, for, for what this plot went through uh, over in Provo County, uh, it definitely had a tough year. But they uh, plot average, I think, was 197. So that's a pretty high level. But the offensive hybrid is just full to show all, across all the CPU ranges. Uh, the next I mean, this is. What we'd really like to see in this, in this um, uh, trial is that as we get in lower CPUs, the offensive has a negative yield advantage and the deep offensive has a more yield advantage. And then in the higher CPUs, we want to see the offensive you know, just kind of steal this run away with it. But um, 2015, we definitely did not get what we bargained for. So um, in this location, the offensive hybrid just really dominated all all nine CPU ranges. Here's the Pioneer uh, location. We do see a little bit of, of um, advantage to the defensive hybrid in the in the lower CPUs, but as we get all the way to the to the high end of the scale, it, I mean those two hybrids run neck and neck. And it's, I'll show you something at the end. It's pretty interesting. Um, some comments I found about those two hybrids. But uh, next slide. And when we get to the comparison, I mean, it's really hard to draw any statistical. Um, uh, the difference between these two hybrids I and mean, all the way across. I mean, it's just so much variability there that and, um, I would put these two hybrids basically neck and neck all the way across, which is fine. And, uh, again, it's not what we want. Next. Um, and then the Stewart seed uh, here is the complete opposite of what we saw with the Golden Harvest. Uh, the defensive hybrid ran away with the show on this one all, and across all four CPUs. Um, next. And uh, again, the offensive hybrid showed anywhere from an 8 to a 15 bushel disadvantage across all the CPUs. So um, 
And then this, this is uh, compiled all the data. So just given the variability of and results, uh, really no need to delve too deep in, into it. But what I do want to point out is, again, how all these CPUs model what we're seeing in the field. Even though 2015 was a tough year, I mean, I had a lot of water damage, and uh, then towards the end, some areas dried out pretty well. But we still see a uh, yield increase as we move from the lower yielding CPUs to the higher yielding CPUs. Um, and then, because it's an ongoing study, <coughs> I included the uh, two years worth of data uh, that we have acquired so far. The um, over on the Golden Harvest side, uh, two years worth of data showing that the offensive hybrid um, won in both years, basically. And there's really no trend that we're detecting there. On the pi year data, uh, there's a little bit of trend, but if we drop out maybe the one year's worth of data, it gets a little more fuzzy. Um, and then the, on the Stewart seed, yeah, there, there is definitely a trend there. Uh, 2014 just really rocketed those uh, seven, eights, and nines up. Um, but again, it, it's really not showing a whole lot of a whole lot of uh, trend there, just from what we've got this year. And we're gonna approach this again next year and see if that changes anything. Next, take home message. Um, results show, well, question mark. But I guess I'll talk a little bit about a, a little, uh, brief interaction I had with uh, Sonny Beck this past summer. Uh, went to the Beck's Field Days and uh, actually had supper with Sonny. And he kind of posed to the group, what, uh, what do you guys think is your biggest challenge in 2016? And you know, everybody said profitability and, and uh, grain price. And I said, well, I think my biggest challenge is how to use data from 2015 to make decisions for 2016. And he said, that's a good idea, and uh, and or a good point. But uh, any rate, so I guess take home message here is that you know look at your hybrid, or you can't spend enough time picking hybrids for next year based on previous year's data. Now I know a lot of people will say that uh, hybrids don't stick around that long, but guess what? The good ones do. I mean, you look at through some Z catalogs, there's plenty of hybrids that are going on now, like five years, and they're the ones that you want to plant because they've got the long-term longevity of uh, yield potential that you know, the ones that only last a year or so, they just are lacking. So um, growers can't spend enough time evaluating hybrids next growing season. Use every tool that you have. Um, aero imagery, uh, the profit calculator program, which I'm going to get into here in a second for those that haven't heard about that. And then third-party yield trials, whether it's OSUs or integrated ag or first trials. Just uh, you know, spend some time on your iPad while you're sitting on the beach uh, looking at hybrids. Next. Okay, so profit calculator program. If anybody hasn't been or me for the past two years, I'll kind of bring up speed. What the profit calculator program is, is uh, combining growers data into a large pool that will allow us to look at how our hybrids are performing against the group's hybrids. So it's kind of a score, if everybody takes the report cards and tosses them in the pile, you can see how you did against the group. And that's what this is, is, is you can take look at your hybrids as well as other hybrids planted by the, uh, within the pool and see how your hybrids did against those hybrids in the pool as well as how your CPUs um, yielded against the group. So this is uh, just a screenshot here uh, looking at a CPU 5, just a few hybrids um, that uh, were planted this past year, and, and on the bottom we see the yield levels, and um, on the left there you see a couple of different hybrids. Uh, next slide. I think this one kind of shows a little bit better. It's still hard to see. I, I apologize. I wrote down how many hybrids we actually had in the pool this year. On uh, 36 hybrids uh, from 2015. So um, obviously not a large pool, but it is a pretty good start and. I mean, the companies here represented are, I mean, they're uh, definitely the ones that you guys are probably looking at for seed. The cow, Agricole, uh, Stewart's, Pioneer, Golden Harvest, I mean, all those, all the big hitters are in there. So, uh, back, I don't know if there's, there might be some backs in there, though. But uh, what this is showing is across all CPU ranges, how it, um, how each hybrid fared uh, across all the, basically this is all the CPUs and how each hybrid did across the process. Um, and in green is the group's data set, and then in blue is Dave Shiver's hybrids that he had planned this past year. Okay, next. 
Um, I'm just going to breeze right through these. This, if anybody wants to see this, obviously you can continue later. But here's the uh, low ranging CPUs. Um, what's interesting here is that you look down there on the left, and that yield, the yields we were pulling off of some of these hybrids match, even though they're low CPUs, lower yielding, uh, lower yield potential, they're still yielding very well. Um, and that could just be just because of the <coughs> how much rain they got and how long it stood. Uh, next, here's uh, more of the medium, medium soil types. Um, again, it, it's pretty wide range. And then and here's the, uh, the best of the best, the high CPU range, dark soils, how they do it. Next, okay, uh, just a little bit of background on some of the hybrids that we, we uh, had in our study. Uh, 14R38, this is positioned as the offensive hybrid. Uh, 114 day. Actually, yes. the golden harvest well, didn't have the longest uh, relative maturities and the uh, plot data. Uh, then 13, uh, 13U53 uh, was a defensive hybrid. Interesting enough, this one actually was used in the 2014 plot as well. Um, they had a pretty good show, show in there. Next, I'm here, uh, 1197. I'm sure, just about everybody here has heard of that one. If you haven't, uh, you need to look at some yield data from OSU or Integrate Ag, or you've probably seen it on your farm. It did very well this past year. Uh, that was positioned as our offensive hybrid. And then 0970, uh, that was our defensive hybrid. And uh, it was used in the 2014 plot. That's a little blurb out of the uh, Pioneer uh, uh, website. Should be kept away from maximum yield environments. But looking at the yield data we, we got this year, it hung right with 1197. So that was pretty cool. Kind of speaks for for how, how, um, how well the hybrid can do in variable environments. And then finally, here's the uh, steward. Can you cut me off? Yeah, yeah, you need to. You're good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, one last thing, you guys. Um, I can't think of saying this enough. Uh, Sanjana Pioneer and Stuart Steves. Talk to these guys that here. If you're interested in those, those hybrids that we had on the, um, in the trials, talk to them about them. Thanks, guys. All right. Since Andrew gave me plenty of time, you will have to do questions later on. No, I got it. Okay. Can you guys hear all right back there? Okay. Uh, my name is Evan Duck, and I am also a consultant, and I'm going to be uh, covering the PCT Infro uh, Starter Fertilizer Study that we did in 2015. Um, we, uh, we work with TruePoint once again. There, there's several different companies that you know offer the, these uh, types of products, starter products. And um, uh, PCT is, is powered by TruePoint. Uh, they, are, they actually are located out of uh, Kepersville, Ohio. Um, this, is a, this is a continued study.